بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى كل من تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وبعد Respected brothers and sisters well let's say less respected sisters and brothers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I'm actually very, very happy the way this topic has been arranged. I was actually thinking, coming here and just putting my thoughts together, because whenever we talk about rights in an audience, and I've talked about this topic many times, many places, I've never, it's never just focusing on one gender. It's always rights of the husband, rights of the wife, rights of men, rights of women, it's always you can't understand this topic except both sides are discussed. And then every time I always mention this, that one of the problems that we have is that we live in a time when everybody just wants their rights and they don't think about what they have to give other people. Every relationship, every relationship, the employer will learn about the rights of the employer forget the rights of the employee. The mother-in-law only knows the rights of the mother-in-law. The daughter-in-law only knows the rights of the daughter-in-law. The mother-in-law lives in a mother-in-law world and the daughter-in-law lives in the daughter-in-law world. The daughter-in-law, she never thinks, how is it to be on the other side of the fence? Never realizes, never thinks. The daughter-in-law, she's got married. She's got a three-year-old baby son. Remember, she, you have a son, three years old, 20 years down the line, when he is 23, he'll bring a bride, and then you'll become a mother-in-law. But then that time, she will completely change, she'll forget it was probably a previous life. Being a daughter-in-law, what is all that about? Now is, her mind's completely changed, she's a mother-in-law now. She doesn't understand what a daughter-in-law feels like. And likewise, the mother-in-law, right now she's really angry, and she's you know trying to control the daughter-in-law, but we, we tell her, Oh, mother-in-law, remember, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, you were a daughter-in-law. Was I a daughter-in-law? That's like some species that I don't understand what that species is about. The landlord only knows the hukuk or rights of being a landlord, and the tenant only knows the hukuk and rights of the tenant. Uh, of the tenant. The parents only now know about their rights. Some parents, the only ayat of the Qur'an they know, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أُنْ تُشْرِكْ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمْ وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفَ بِرُّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ They know all the ayat of the Qur'an of the rights of the parents. What about all the amazing rights of the children that Allah has placed as responsibilities for parents? And the children, they only remember or know about how the parents should treat them. And this is a sad fact. Every relationship and the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam says you can't be a complete believer la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibba li nafsi which means that we have to put ourselves on the other side of the fence if you're a husband think about the rights of the wife whenever when i talk about this topic i always say we have sometimes married people men and women and i say this that husbands and men don't come here to listen to your rights. Come to listen to your responsibilities. And wives, because sometimes, you know, it's like there's a gathering, sisters are one side, brothers are, and we're talking about the rights of the husband and wife, and the husband is thinking, when I'm talking about the rights of the wife, treat your women, and all the hukuk and the rights of the, of the, of the women, the women are thinking, I hope my husband's listening, I hope he's listening, yes, 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 speak a bit more, yes, yes, he needs to know this, and he needs to know that. And the husband, then we talk about, when we start talking about the rights of the husband, that respect your husband, obey your husband, and all the different, different hukuk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed uh, on the wife as responsibility and the rights of the husband, then the husband is thinking, yeah, I hope my wife is listening. Yes, yes. Yeah, she's listening. Is she listening? 
And this is a big problem because everyone is just coming to listen to the rights. We live in a time, it's me, myself, and I. Everything is just about me. What about you? And seriously, somebody asked me today over breakfast when we were at our guest's house that how do you make your marriage work? You know, getting married is easy. Probably the easy, well, it should be easy. That's another problem. Subhanallah, what can we talk about? You know, marriage is supposed to be such an easy aspect of Islam and deen and life. The Sahaba would get married as they would, as they would just change their clothes. Seriously, Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, he got married. He, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa saw him. He had some stain on his clothes. He said, oh, Abdurrahman, what's this yellow stain? He said, oh, yellow stain, oh, last week, Ya Rasulullah, last week I got married and I applied some perfume and that's the stain of the perfume. He said, oh, you got married last week. This is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He did not even feel the need to tell Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that I got married. If it was some imam like me today, Sha, you didn't tell me, by yourself, getting married, what's happening, brother? It's no big deal, like people get married and no problem, you know, you don't have... They, this is how the Sahaba would marry. Simplicity in weddings is a topic on its own. People go and undergo depression. People have to save up for 10 years. Parents have restrictions until the great granddad doesn't come back from Hyderabad and the other one doesn't come from here and every, the grandma from here doesn't have her say and this one doesn't. Everyone, the more, seriously, the elderly people, uh, I tell you honestly, the more we close the door for halal, the doors of haram, we are opening ourselves then we have no right to complain if our children are involved in zina or in unlawful relationships. There's a hadith of the Messenger وسلم, that if parents don't make their children married off and they commit sins, فَإِنَّمَا إِثْمُهُ عَلَىٰ أَبِيهِ The sin is on the father. Make it easy. Self-imposed restrictions that this has to be done and that has to be done. I have hundreds and thousands of emails and cases where children want to marry but parents are not letting them marry. Just yesterday or some, somebody was saying that, you know, my parents say, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, you have to do that. And I am in a, I'm living here in the West and the fitna is around me. I mean, how can I save myself? I'm 24, 25 years of age. Seriously, in this day and age, living in this environment for a 25 year old to stay away from zina, I think it's a miracle. It's a wali of Allah. Seriously. This, it's not easy. We try to brush under the carpet everyone, alhamdulillah, I'm away from sins. It's, it's a natural need, natural need, just like the need of eating food. So that's another topic. Make marriages easy. Make it easy for young people to get married. So staying, uh, to get married is easy. I was saying it's easy. It's supposed to be easy. But remaining married is difficult. And remaining happily married is even more difficult. Yes, people married, you will know. Remaining happily married is even more difficult. It's a mujahada, it's a struggle. You young people, you know, you're all getting excited about marriage, marriage, marriage. When you get married, then you realize that, oh, what have I done? <laughs> Inshallah, it's good. It's, it's very difficult, you know. There's so many ahadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that talk about the blessings of marriage, the fadail of marriage, the virtues of marriage, the rewards, the rewards of marriage. And I don't want to make this as a marriage topic because I'm coming to the rights of the women, but the rewards of marriage. Once I was teaching a course and I was talking about listing, we were going through all the hadiths that talk about the rewards of getting married. It's a sunnah. There's so much reward if we do it with the right intention acting upon the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so one brother asked a question he stood up and he said can i ask you a question i said yes ask the question he said i have a thought in my mind subhanallah i'm thinking that in islam all the things that give you a lot of reward they're all difficult you know like fajr salah five o'clock in the morning difficult tahajjud fasting in ramadan hajj you know it's all difficult and it's right it's in the hadith the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, حُجِبَتِ النَّارُ بِالشَّهَوَاتِ وَحُجِبَتِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِ That hellfire is veiled with apparently pleasurable things. If you want to enter hellfire, then apparently pleasurable things, eating haram, zina, stealing, all the... Apparently, things that you enjoy doing, they take you to hellfire. وَحُجِبَتِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِ And the things that 
are difficult to take you to Jannah. And this is a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why didn't Allah do it the opposite way around? Ask Allah. I mean, this is a sunnah even in this world. I'll give you an example. Even in this world, somebody wants to live a healthy lifestyle, yes? You're a dietitian. You want to diet and be healthy. You go to a dietitian. Give me, what shall I eat? Cakes, burgers, pizzas, cheese, jam, strawberries, desserts. Is that what he's going to say? No. If you want to be healthy, you have to eat things you don't want to eat. Why, why wasn't it like this that, okay, you know, to be so healthy, cakes and pizzas and burgers. Allah could have made it like that. To be very healthy, all the things that we like to eat. And to not be healthy, the things we don't like to eat. But it's not like that. That's the sunnah of Allah in this life. So even for Jannah and Jahannam, it's a test. So this brother asked this question. He said, I see all the difficult things take you to Jannah. All the hard things, difficult things take you to paradise. And all the easy or apparently pleasurable things, apparently pleasurable, because that's another discussion. These are apparently pleasurable. For those who have connection with Allah, there's no pleasure in sin. Apparently pleasurable things take you to hellfire. He asked a question, but there's one exception. You are mentioning so much reward for nikah and marriage, and this is the only one thing that there's, alhamdulillah, so much pleasure, and takes you to Jannah. I said, brother, are you married? He said, no. I said, that's why you're saying this. <laughs> when you get married, after five years, let's see if you ask the same question. Easy to get married, difficult to remain married, and even more difficult to live a happy marriage life. But this is a very good system. I, alhamdulillah, I really like it. Because we all come to listen to our rights. So yeah, I was saying that somebody asked today, I've taught a lot of marriage courses. What is the conclusion? If somebody asked me, I've been teaching marriage courses for 10, 15 years, different places, so many places, even here, actually in Chicago, I came 2011, and there was a retreat and I taught the whole marriage course for about three days. After so many years of teaching, if somebody asked me, tell me one summarized sentence of the whole family, not just marriage, family relationship, marriage relationship, what is that summarized sentence? I feel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in any, if we want to have prosperous relationships, marital relationships, parents and children relationships, siblings and family relationships, the summary is that and this is how what I feel, what I understand, and Allah knows best, is that in any relationship to be prosperous, we each person involved in that relationship has to make everything about the other person. It's all about you. The husband gets married not for his satisfaction. It's not about my right. It's not about what I want. I have married a woman for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I have married her for her, to help her, to assist her, to take her close to Allah, to fulfill her rights, a Muslimah, a believing woman who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a human being, a creation of Allah. And for the sake of Allah, I am here just to give. That's it. Forget my rights. Who can, whether she gives me my rights, I don't mind. I have so many people who call me, okay, problem in marriage. What's the problem? I do this, 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 but my husband doesn't do this, this, this. I do, 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 I do so much, but my wife doesn't do this. I said, you know, when you go in Yawm Al-Qiyamah and Akhirah, you'll think that I wish he didn't do nothing, you know, all the rewards you got. You don't worry about what your spouse gives you. You just worry about, and if everyone takes it upon themselves about what they have to give, then everybody will be happy. Because everybody's just giving. Nobody's worried about taking. The wife has to think, I am getting married, why? It's only for the sake of, I am in this marriage to serve my beautiful husband. I am here to serve him for the sake of Allah. I am here, my Jannah is through my husband. My Jannah is through my wife. My Jannah is through my parents, my children. Bringing up children is my Jannah. These things take us to paradise. Every relationship make it all about giving, that's it. Charity is giving. It's all about, rather than me, myself, I, we have to make every relationship about you, yourself, you. Not me, myself, I. Forget me. It's all about you. Every relationship throughout our life, to the point that even, subhanAllah, this, I, this came to my mind a few months ago, and this is like a detection, and Allah knows best if I'm in a sabtu, fa min Allah, wa in a khta'tu, fa minni wa min a shaitan. We have children here as well. 
that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that, you know, he was is a hadith of Bukhari and Muslim, that some of the companions, the poor companions, came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, ذهب أهل الدثور بالأجور The wealthy people have taken duthur, the people of wealth, they've taken away all the ujur, all the rewards. Why? They said, Yusalluna kama nusalli, wa yasumuna kama nusum. They pray, we pray, they fast, we fast, meaning we are all equal. Wa yatasaddaquna bi fadli amwalihim. However, they have an advantage. They have money, just like right now, mashallah, you were giving in charity. The rich, the, someone who has money, okay, he can give with his wealth and we don't have money to give, so we're left behind. I don't know if this is the right time straight. Uh, fundraisers don't so I can mention this is okay. So the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Awalaysa, hasn't Allah given you something ma bihi? Allah has given you something, you can give charity. You don't have to give charity, it's not just through wealth. But remember, this doesn't mean that it replaces it. it doesn't mean it replaces zakat and sadaqa and everything has its own place. But he was just saying that if you don't have wealth, then you can also do charity in different ways. In bi kulli tasbihatin sadaqa. Every time you say Subhanallah is sadaqa, wa kulli tahlilatin sadaqa. Every time you say La ilaha illallah is charity, wa kulli takbiratin sadaqa. Every time you say Allahu Akbar sadaqa, wa amrun bil ma'aruf wa nahyun anil munkari sadaqa. In joining the good is charity, forbidding the evil charity. Then he said, wa fi budi ahadikum sadaqatun. Each one of you fulfilling your intimate needs with your spouse is sadaqah. Somebody said in a talk afterwards, I don't have to give zakat anymore. My zakat is in the bedroom. As I said, it doesn't replace it. Even in intimate relationships, this is charity. Now the deduction I understood from this hadith, Wallahu alam, sadaqah is about what? It's all about giving. When you're helping, you're assisting, giving the poor. To the point Islam says, even intimate relationships, this is deep point, even intimate relationship between the husband and the wife has to all be about the other person. Even that. You don't get married for your own gratification. You're there to fulfill the needs of your spouse. From every angle possible. Physically, emotionally, psychologically, intimately, every angle possible, you are there to serve as a man and as a woman. So this is why, this was just like the introduction that I really, I was so happy to see this, that the talk for the men, which was supposed to start, and I'm going to start now, the talk for the men is all about what we as men have responsibilities and we have to give the rights of our women. And like uh, Mufti Minhaj mentioned, that the talk for the sisters was what they have to give to you. So don't worry, inshallah, we're hearing about what we have to give our women, their hukuk, their rights, but they've heard their, you know, what they have to do as well. And this is, this is how it should be, really. And I'm going to keep this in mind. I think some places we're going to do this, inshallah. That for the women, don't listen. You don't even listen to what your rights are. We don't, the men don't need to listen to what our rights are. We just need to listen to our wife's rights or our women's rights. And women need to listen just to about men's rights. Don't listen to your rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, these rights and these hukuq, deen is all about hukuq. You know, half of our deen is fulfilling the rights of human beings. Hukukullah wa hukuk al-ibad. Our deen is based on two things. If you were to summarize the, the rights of the, uh, the laws of sharia, half of them, rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rights of human beings. And the ulama actually say, حُقُوقُ الْعِبَادِ مُقَدَّمٌ عَلَىٰ حُقُوقِ اللَّهِ The rights of the servants of Allah, the creation of Allah, are given preference over the rights of Allah Himself. Because if we harm, if we inconvenience, if we do not fulfill the rights of human beings and the creation of Allah, then until they don't forgive us, Allah will not forgive us. With Allah, if we commit a sin between us and Allah, we just wake up in the middle of the night or whenever, Ya Allah, oh Allah, forgive me. Sin forgiven. The one who repents from his sin is like he's never committed the sin. End of story. Angels are made to forget. 
and the record book book is clean. It's swiped. You know, we had the swipers. You know, when he kept on saying swipers, I thought he was saying snipers. I said, this one of the, what's this snipers? Because I've never heard this in England, these swipers like that, you know, use this word swipers. But then I thought, I said, look, he said, people are going around with snipers, snipers. I got, a, I got a bit scared, but then I saw swipers, alhamdulillah. All the sins are swiped away. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. But when it comes to the hukuk and the rights of the makhluq, if we've wronged somebody, we've backbited, we've cheated, we owe money. We can't just, I owe somebody 2,000 pounds. Oh Allah, tahajjud salah, after taraweeh, oh Allah, forgive me for all my sins. And that's it, I don't have to pay you 2,000 pounds. It doesn't work like that. Until I don't go and pay or I don't get it forgiven, Allah will not forgive. And this is why the rights of the servants of Allah are highly important. And more so our family members from all the creation of Allah. Animal have rights. We had the session today. Animal have rights. The whole of humanity, Muslim, non-Muslim, we have to give their rights. But as they get closer to us, the rights are increased. The emphasis on the rights are increased. So the whole of humanity, then people in America, then people in Illinois, that's the state. And then in Illinois, or Illinois, I don't know how you pronounce it, however you pronounce it. Then people in Chicago, then this area, then this must, your, your community, emphasis is increased. Then your family, charity begins at home. Sometimes we want to be nice and gentle and kind and considerate to the whole of humanity, except the beautiful wife that Allah has given you at home and the beautiful children that Allah has given you at home. And there's a reason why that happens sometimes. The reason is, there's two reasons. One is because, I'll tell you why, sometimes, Allah forbid, but this happens, is because it's easy to be good and kind and hospitable and courteous with everybody else outside, difficult at home. Why? Because the people you're living with at home, you're living with them 24-7. You're sharing the same house, same kitchen, same bedroom, same bed with the spouse. You're living 24-7 and human beings can't live with one another. They think differently, they live differently. It's a challenge, it's a test. This is actually in the hadith of Sunan Tirmidhi where the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, المسلم الذي يخالط الناس ويصبر على آذاهم خير من المسلم الذي لا يخالط الناس ولا يصبر على آذاهم. A believer who lives with people interacts with people and because of which he has to do sabr because which this means that if we there's two choices one person can say you know what i'm just going to live in isolation in an island on top of a mountain nobody will harm me i won't harm anybody there's, your feelings will not be hurt the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying al muslim alladhi yukhalitun nasa someone who takes the challenge like we all have taken the challenge a human being is a social being. We live with people. You, when you live with people, it's a must that your feelings will be hurt. It's impossible to live a life with people and feelings not being hurt. Why it's not possible? Because we all think differently. We all think differently. We all look differently. Our fingerprints. I came to you know, the, the airport. Okay, stand. Put your four fingers. Everyone's fingerprints are different. We are all mentally, psychologically different. When people are different, there'll be different views. And in a marriage, the gender is different as well. In marriage, gender is different. Brothers, you, I'm sure there's lots of married people here, and alhamdulillah, they've lived a long life of marriage. And may Allah carry on, keep protecting and preserving your family lives and make lots of love and mahabba. So I'm not addressing, you know, our great, you know, married people who've become grandparents and subhanAllah raised beautiful families. But I'm talking about talking to some of the younger people that before getting married or if you're just recently married, realize, remember, you have to understand this, that there are differences. Your spouse is different from you. Your wife is different from you. One of the problems that young people face when they get married is all their life they've lived a bachelor lifestyle. They've hanged around with the brothers and they've gone to have some shisha and some coffee and, you know, and then, you know, they're just chilling out. I don't know if they use that word here and relaxing. And then when they get married, they think their wife is one of the lads. You know, it's like, you know, you were probably just chilling with your mate and you said something which is, you know, you, you maybe just, you know, just did that on the back, tapped, her, tapped him, your friend, or you said, made a remark or something. And he took it. It was just a joke. No problem. You know, he'll, he'll have his back the next day. You know, he'll probably give you a remark. 
You can't do the same thing to your wife. A woman, she's number one, she's a woman, she's different from you. She's more sensitive, she's more gentle, she's fragile, she thinks differently. You say the same thing to your wife, she'll cry for four months. She will. And then you will think, why is, what's so big deal? Like, why, why are you crying for? But you don't understand, you're not a woman. And this is actually taken from a hadith. There's a hadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-mar'atu min dil'in. Al-mar'atu khuliqat min dil'in. Al-mar'atu ka dil'i. I actually have a book on this. and I, I've, This is a book, it's being sold there, and I'm not selling it, so I'm not trying to sell anything here. I just saw it, alhamdulillah, Darul Salaam is selling it. But I gathered, four, this is two, three years ago, 40 hadiths I picked from the six books of hadith. These are all authentic hadiths with translations and three, four pages commentary in, on every hadith from the beginning of the marriage till the end of the marriage. Hadith 39 to 40, there's four hadiths on the rights of the wife, four on the husband. So I've got four. And one of the first ones of the rights of the wife, because I start with the rights of the wife, حقوق المرأة على زوجها, rights and privileges of the wife. The first one here is, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, I'll come to the dil' one. أَكْمَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا وَخِيَارُكُمْ خِيَارُكُمْ لِنِسَائِهِمْ خُلُقًا رواه ترمذي وابن ماجه The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, the believers with the most complete faith are the ones with the best character. The best amongst you are the best of you in character towards the women. The best amongst you are those who are the best in character towards the women. And then there's a commentary. I won't read the commentary. It's quite long, two, three pages. But this is the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. So it's absolutely sahih, authenticated hadith. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira relates, Al-mar'atu kaddil'i in aqamtaha kasartaha wa id istamta'ata biha istamta'ata wa fiha iwaj. A woman is like a rib. If you try to straighten her, you will break her. If you want to enjoy her, enjoy her with the crookedness. Now this, no, this, we are smiling. I've actually explained this hadith in two, three pages. I've actually specifically chosen the difficult, so-called difficult hadith that some people try to use against Islam, that look, this is what Islam says. I took on the challenge that no, let's explain the real context of this hadith. This hadith is misunderstood by some non-Muslims. They say, look, Islam degrade, degrades women. A woman is like a rib and she's crooked. And some men actually believe that. Some Muslim, they actually, this one woman phoned me, said, my husband, whenever he gets angry, he says, you, oh, crooked one, I, the messenger called you crooked. You are crooked, I knew. You were crooked from day one. You're bent. What is the meaning of this hadith? Look in Fath al-Bari, look in Nawawi's commentary, look what the commentators on the Shurrah explained of this hadith. The messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa is saying, he's talking, and then in another riwayah, he said, therefore, the completion of the hadith, therefore, treat your women honorably, well, be kind, because they are like a rib. This is not saying they are crooked. This is saying that from the man's perspective, from the man's angle, the woman looks crooked, which means that from your angle, the woman looks different. And the beauty of the rib is in it being slightly bent. That is the beauty. If that rib is straight, then there is no beauty. The beauty of the woman is in her being sensitive, is in her being gentle, is in her being fragile, handle with care. I tell some men, if you forget that, tell your wife, put a sticker at the back. Fragile, handle with care. Because they men forget. And some men forget they marry women. So I tell the men that take a subha in your hand and make tasbih. I married a woman, I married a woman, I married a woman, I married a woman, I married because we need reminder. You keep on forgetting that you married a woman. You didn't marry a man. She's different. Emotionally, psychologically, from all angle possible, she is a woman. Somebody has to keep on telling you, Brother, you married a woman. Think to yourself. It's a mujahada at the beginning. You're trying to do something. Just think to yourself as a husband. Oh, okay, no, I've married a woman. I can't do this. I've married a woman. She's different. She's not like one of the lads, one of the guys, one of the men. She is like a rib. She's very, very fragile. If you say something to a man, he'll just laugh it off. But if you say to a woman, she's going to cry for days. Sometimes women cry without you saying anything. I'm sure the mar married men will, your wives cry. You ask, why are you crying? They don't know themselves why they're crying. It happens. Like, I don't know. Why am I crying for? But that is the beauty. That is the beauty, subhanAllah. That makes a woman, woman. That is the beauty of a woman. If that wasn't in a woman, you'd be married a man. You know, you want a woman to get married to. The, the sensitivity, the gentleness, the fragileness. This is the beauty of a woman. And this is why Allah has told the man, this hadith is saying, 
That look, if you try to straighten her, what does that mean? If you try to make her like you, if you try to make her like a man, if you, one of the major reasons of problems in marriage is because men want to make their wives like them. You want your wife to think like you, you want your wife to eat like you, you want your wife to like the same food like you and have the same opinions. It's not going to happen unless you turn her into a man. She, as long as she's going to stay a woman, it's not going to happen. So just forget that dream. She will remain a woman and she will think differently. She will be emotional and you have to live with it. And that's why the hadith is saying, When istamta'ata biha, istamta'ata wa fiha iwaj. If you want to derive benefit, then derive benefit from her as she is. Don't try to change her because you will not able to change her. So this is what the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying. That she is different so therefore, and differences, you have to understand, another point here is that sadly we live in a time that one of the major reasons of problem is because we don't understand these differences. There's books written on this topic, non-Muslims have written, I'm sure many of you may have read that book, Mars, men from Mars, women from Venus, I've read that book. There are differences, there's so many differences. The problem today is that we mix up equality with similarity. There's equality in Islam. Men and women are equal in Islam according to Allah in al Muslimin wal Muslimat, wal Mu'minin wal Mu'minat, wal Qanitin wal Qanitat, wal Sadiqin wal Sadiqat, wal Hafidin al Furujah, wal Hafidat, wal Dakirin Allah Kathira, wal Dakirat. It's equality. But men and women are not the same, they are different. The problem today in the West is that. People confuse equality with similar, or similarity. And there are people, we, you know, gender roles are being mixed up. Men were created differently. Allah gave men different qualities and different weaknesses. Women have different qualities and weaknesses. The man's role in a marriage was to be the breadwinner, was to be the caretaker, was to be the qawwam or the qiwam. So this was the role of the man. The woman's role was to be, you know, the submissive woman towards her husband and rely on her husband and be gentle and, and you know, re rely on the shoulder of her husband and, and turn to her husband. This, this is how Islam, men and women are not to, uh, they, are, they are not there to, uh, compete with one another, but rather to complement one another. A man with masculine traits, a man with masculine understanding, a man who plays the role of a man, he is a man. And you have a woman who is a feminine woman, who has feminine traits, plays the role of a feminine. This is a perfect, perfect example of a perfect union, and it's, it's, it's a perfect match. Men and women have been created, to complement one another. Sadly, we live in a time that the man is losing his masculinity from everything possible. From the way the man is thinking, from the clothes that the man is wearing. Nowadays, you know, there's, there's like people who don't even now, right now, there's so many people who don't even believe in genders. It's a big thing right now. There was just reading in the news the other day, they were saying that they want in passports, male, female, and other. Like, you know, or somebody was saying the other day that they want at, at birth that doctors shouldn't tell you that this is a boy or a girl. And where we're going towards that time. Right now, you go to the shops, upstairs floor, men clothing, second floor, female clothing. I'm sure 40, 50 years down the line, there's not going to be no floors for men clothing or female. Everything will be just... Like right now as well, I went to once to a shop. I said, you know, uh, we, we, uh, this, I asked for a particular clothing. Is this like, I, I don't know what it was. Is, is this a male clothing, female? So no, for male and female, both wear it. There's so many clothing, male, female. Men are dressing like women, women are dressing like men. Gender roles are mixed up. The man is losing his masculinity. So we've got now a man who dresses, who acts, who talks, who behaves like half partially woman. And you've got a woman who acts and behaves and wears clothing like a man. You had a perfect marriage that Allah made, man and woman. Now you've got a half man and a half woman marrying a half man and a half woman. It's going to be a problem in a marriage. Sorry to be frank, but that's one of the reasons why we have problems. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us this in this hadith. Your women are different. They are very gentle, very fragile. Think about it. 
they you need to treat them honorably you need to treat them keeping this in mind that they are very gentle very fragile they they are like this rib and you benefit from them and this is why we have to understand that they are fragile and they are gentle they are considerate and i was talking about there are many differences so the man before i'm talking about to, to the young people think about this that when you, before you get married understand how a woman thinks how a woman talks go to go to somebody elderly someone experienced talk to your parents and i i really advise the parents that don't just marriage is not oh my, my son or oh, mashallah girl down there yeah yeah get married nikah walima this that done sit down with your son you've got experience of 50 years 40 years of marriage you as a father beta sit look you're going into a next phase of life this phase of life is a very very difficult phase of life there are ups and downs there are struggles there are mujahada there are striving there's a lot of striving there's hardships along the way this is what you will expect you need to do this this way you need to do this that way explain talk to them tell them women there's differences you know women for example a lot of young people when i tell them they don't before marriage someone needs to tell you this there are differences a woman for example talks metaphorically do you know this a man talks haqiqatan a woman your wife tells you you've never taken me outside to the restaurant what she means is can we go today you've never taken me and the man is baffled last week i took you kabili you have you never take me it's like two weeks ago but for her two weeks is never she talks like that's the way no problem you just think yes she doesn't mean that because they talk like that women when they have hardships or struggles or when they have something on their mind they like to talk they come to their husbands this happened that happened just talking about this she's talking about that the husband thinks so big deal like okay this is you can solve it like okay just do this this she's telling you a two hour story and you're thinking okay but what's the big deal okay just don't phone her anymore finish if this happened okay don't talk to her anymore but then she's, she no no you don't understand she doesn't want you to give her the solution that don't talk to her anymore she just wants you to listen with sabr and patience that's it because a woman listens and can talk for 2 hours so now if you're not going to listen to her then she'll pick up the phone and she'll talk to her friend for 2 hours oh that happened oh okay this that long but the husband doesn't have the sabr like i can't tolerate even if you it's difficult i know brothers i'm a brother as well it's <laughs> it's difficult just you know maybe i think of masail in my head <laughs> yeah i'm just working out some kitab or something and you say just subhanallah really that's what happened but when you get caught out then you get caught out i'm just thinking about some masala or some or somebody okay that kitab i was reading and i'm saying okay subhanallah really that's what happened but my mind is somewhere else you just have to listen and i listen to a bit but it's difficult sometimes but you have to like i tell the young people if you want to remain married you have to be a diplomat the great you have to be the greatest politician and not like donald trump but you have to be a, you have to be a clever politician to remain married you have to be a good politician a diplomat and this is why you have to understand that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given these rights to women women are they you know the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said hubbiba ilayya min dunyakum athalath three things were made beloved to me from your dunya and one of them he said women which means that he loved the qualities of women this is what the meaning of the hadith is women they are beautiful creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know the very gentle creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the men sometimes who make them ugly because the way men deal with them and then they lose their beauty because of the way men have been treating them it's very easy to treat women and you know make them beautiful and make them more gentle and make them you but you have to have a tact praise your women praise your women women you know i always say women are like la in shakartum la azidannakum if you understood this women are like what mufti adimuddin women are like la in shakartum la azidannakum If you do shukar I'll give you more. You she cooks you biryani subhanallah jazakallah khair amazing biryani there's no one on planet earth who makes biryani like you. Tomorrow you'll get two plates of biryani. 
You just have to let Allah says, "La in shakartum la azidanakum." If you show thanks to me, I give you more. That's with women as well. Just praise them. You don't have to spend anything to praise them, and do it with the right intention. I was just joking about the diplomacy, you know. Just but you know, with the right intention, with your heart. Tell your wife that look, you know what? I go everywhere. I tell my wife I go everywhere in the world, but I just don't like the food. You know, it's just I come back home and that's it. You know, the food here I miss the food and and then when I'm going that day, the preparation is happening and starting and you know because because I keep on saying this. There's no one who cooks like you. And never tell your wife that your mom cooks good as well. I never tell your mom that well, your wife cooks good. You have to be a diplomat. The man in the middle between. I normally say a fortunate man is he who has an understanding mother and an understanding wife.